Okay, so the city has gone through a great amount of efforts to create a bicycle master plan. Um, if you go to phoenix.gov slash bicycling, there's a link to that plan. Um, over the past few years, we've really improved 12th Street and 15th Avenue. Um, right now, 15th Avenue, there's no longer a flare lane where people can pass on the right. That flare lane has been turned into a right turn only lane and a shared right, a shared uh, bike lane. What's a flare lane? So a flare lane is when, as you're approaching the intersection, you have two lanes that, that widen into three, or one lane that widens into two, and that really creates an unsafe condition on the road for everybody. And in the past, engineers have, have, have looked at that as a way to increase throughput, as a way to increase the number of cars that go to the intersection. What's happened, of course, is that when you have one lane upstream, suddenly going into two lanes downstream, it's like an hourglass. It's just you just get the shooting, speeding condition, people who are behind you, passing on the right, it's very unsafe, and the bike lane is dropped at, so that flare lane can be created. So upstream you have one, one car lane, one bike lane, center turn lane, etc. So that's usually about 40 feet, five foot bike lanes two 10-foot through lanes and a 10-foot center lane makes 40 feet. And at the intersection, well, guess what? 40 feet, <laughs> when you subtract two 5-foot bike lanes, because it becomes an extra 10-foot lane for cars. And then we actually widen the street another 10 feet, so it's 50 feet, so it's four through lanes and one turn lane. So it's, it's, it's terrible for bikes. And the, the collision summary that I do every year shows that about 80 to 90 percent of bike crashes occur within 150 feet of the intersection Generally, there's that bike lane's already been dropped at 300 feet, and so it creates this really, really unsafe place for people to ride because cars generally are not thinking of a bicycle being in front of them when they swerve out to pass people on the right. So we removed all that possibility on 15th Avenue. Now everybody who flares out to the right has to turn right, has to share, has to stop because we now extended the bike lane all the way to the crosswalk by having lots of white paint. And that's also been on 12th Street from Mountain View down to about Indian School. Um, we are actively working on a number of other projects, uh, which I had to write down over there. Uh, but we're working on 3rd Street, putting a bike down on 3rd Street from Indian School down to Roosevelt. That's also going to be a road diet. There are currently two lanes in each direction. It's going to go down to one lane in each direction plus buffer protected bike lanes. Uh, I think it's a paint buffer to start. I don't know if we're going to make parking protected bike lanes or not. That would be an interesting design to do and to pursue. Um, we're working on 3rd Avenue, 5th Avenue, improving the bike lanes there. There's a lot of controversy sort of as to what is going to be the best for bicyclists, whether it's cycle track on 3rd Avenue or just splitting and having northbound, southbound bike lanes on 3rd Avenue. We did also put bike lanes on Roosevelt from Central Avenue to 7th Street. We've got bike lanes on Roosevelt from 7th Avenue West to 15th Avenue. We're going to hopefully get them to 19th Avenue. And then we have to improve all that asphalt between 7th Avenue and Central and then put bike lanes there too. There's going to be bike lanes on Washington and Jefferson between 7th Avenue and 7th Street in the future. Nice. Keep waiting for this to happen. It's <coughs> delays and delays and delays. But that's the plan is to put bike lanes on those two streets because right now there are bike lanes on Jefferson and Washington, west of 7th Avenue and east of 7th Street. So we just have to bridge that gap. We're planning bike lanes on Missouri from 43rd Avenue to 24th Street. That will hopefully include a bridge over I-17. <laughs> so uh, bridge over I-17 is obviously very challenging. Um, we're planning bike lanes on, to improve the bike lanes on Maryland. Right now there are bike lanes on Maryland in various places. We want to take that all the way to 43rd Avenue. There's already a bridge over I-17. Um, there are bike lanes on Maryland from about 35th to 27th, so we now we need to go from 35th to 43rd and 27th on the freeway. Planning bike lanes on Osborne Road, Oak Street from 30. Oak Street from 3rd Street to 20th Street is an active project right now in design with uh, myself and Justin Feek. 
We're looking at the different improvements to make on Oak Street. And then that's going to go up to the Grand Canal. And then we have another project on 20th Street from the Grand Canal up to Glendale and over to Fiesta Peak. That's also uh, probably, it's about a year behind. I'm going to try and bring that forward so it's all done at once. We're working on bike lanes on 24th Street from the airport up to about Van Buren, maybe a little bit further north. That's got some complexities at Buckeye Road. Uh, and many of you hopefully know about the Grand Canal, the canalscape improvements that we're working on. Um, that's that, that's had some, that has a few difficulties as well because of the, the cost. But phase one will be around 15th Avenue, 16th Street, and a little bit of 32nd to 40th Street. Phase two is filling in those gaps and going all the way to Tempe. And then another phase west of I-17, and then a bridge finally over the canal or a tunnel or something. Cross your fingers on that. And then we're also working on the Salt River Path, Rio Salado Path. Right now there is a path from 19th Avenue, 32nd Street, and we are actively designing and almost in final stages of the design to get from 32nd Street to Tempe, which would then finally connect Rio Salado from 19th Avenue all the way to Mesa. So uh, it's a really, really good project when that comes out. We're going to try and work on a curly queue from that Rio Salado path up to the airport into the East Economy parking lot, wow. and then you can sky train to the airport from there. So. Okay, so, Joe, how can people um, Contact, how can people, if they need a bike lane, how can they advocate for that? Who, what do they do? How so do you get Big that? Spokes People is a really good group to join to advocate for bike lanes. Um, you can. My email address is bike, B-I-K-E, at phoenix.gov, so it's really simple. Um, if you go to phoenix.gov slash bicycle lane, I've got cards as well here in my pocket. Um, so it's got my email address on there. So the best way to do that is to email, email, email your elected representatives, email me. Know, Lisa or Bill or Annie and you know where we are there's lots of other streets that need bike lanes we need to have bike lanes on Canto in the, on the west side there's lots of places where bike lanes are necessary 63rd Avenue 79th Avenue etc the bridges over the canals all those kinds of things so I have a question. yes um, how about um, are there any things on the docket to improve the bike lanes back and forth to the city manager's office, to your council persons, and to department heads is that the street transportation department thinks that what they do is okay if they don't get complaints, if they don't get people calling and emailing. Them. Spike lane is, is almost good enough for me to ride on, but you know, putting, we need to put green paint on Central Avenue. We should put those markings more frequently than they already are. I designed those markings to be 300 feet of 150 feet apart so that we could put them at 75 feet as well. So, and then green paint in between those. So, you know, it's, it's, it's like pulling teeth sometimes with the department because they, they want to do the minimal amount from a financial perspective and they wait to see what kind of impact it has. And it has some impact because now it's, it's, it's visible that there's a marking and there's a sign, but now the operational component is that people still feel it's not safe. People still feel like they're not welcome there, and then they get harassed by people who drive, and this becomes a, an inhospitable environment for bicycling. And so, it's okay, for, you know, for me by myself sometimes, not during rush hour. I don't feel like I could do that. I mean, I, I will, and I have. It's much easier at night or at lunch, but it needs to be safe all the time. And you know, we need greater enforcement on our streets for speeding. Be greater enforcement for people who violate the three foot law, which is really hard to enforce <laughs> because people aren't riding on their bikes with a yardstick sticking out, <laughs> cars hitting it. So there needs to be some kind of way to, I don't know, <laughs> there needs to be some kind of way to clarify this three foot law so that starts getting enforced as well. Um, we need citizens to advocate for more speed cameras on our streets, more red light cameras on our streets. Motorists in this town drive way too fast and 
create way too many accidents and cause a far greater amount of mayhem for bicyclists and pedestrians than they do for themselves. Um, it's just really problematic to have an environment where people are trying to do the right thing, they're trying to bike to work, they're trying to bike to school, and they're being hurt by people who drive who are rude and inconsiderate. So I encourage you to join these folks people, email me, and we will keep this pressure on to make bicycling safer for all of us. Thank you. Beautiful.